Hello, Clinton Miner here from Sage Sawtooth Bushcraft. Just wanted to share with you one other little tool that I carry in my toolbox when I'm out in the in the wilderness. Um, boy, when I was about eight or nine years old, I wanted to have some salt with me when I started going out in the wilderness. And it was about that time that things like aspirin and, and other medications started switching from actual glass bottles to plastic bottles and I was pretty excited when that that first plastic bottle of aspirin emptied out I could snatch the bottle clean it out let it dry it out let it dry out and filled it with salt and and I carried that around probably for another 20 years 25 30 years in my backpack because it was a a fairly large quantity of salt enough that I could salt a small hide enough that I could salt a lot of meat enough that I could get a little bit out and use it when I had something going on. <laughs> it didn't always have it with me. Uh, and I've had a number of situations where I've taken small game, uh, uh, cottontail rabbits, um, grouse, uh, mountain grouse, blue grouse, uh, ruffle grouse. And uh, when you try and cook those by themselves, you get, um, it's pretty bland. It's it's not real tasty and isn't it isn't what you should do with with meat. And so um, when I've had salt, it makes a little difference. But uh, one of the things I, I learned from a friend, I, I've got a friend who I hunted with quite a bit up in northern Idaho, and he always carried when we went camping when or hunting, he always took two potatoes and an onion and an onion, two potatoes and an onion. Um, and uh, basically that was his significant meal. He had uh, uh, granola bars and power bars and things like that. And then he would eat that, that meal where he'd just cut up the onion, cut up the potatoes, wouldn't peel either one really much, take a little bit of the outside of the onion off and throw it in a pan and just cook it all up. And the, the juices in that would kind of simmer it down. And that was his meal. Uh, a little bland for me too, but that onion was what gave me the idea. And so, at our house, uh, going back to the to the uh, the plastic uh, aspirin jar, at our house we drink a uh, an energy drink, a vitamin drink in the morning called Zip Fizz. Um, uh, we pick it up at Costco, and and we go through a lot of it. And because of it, we end up with a lot of these uh, these little containers that it comes in. It's a little plastic container, watertight. Uh, the, the lid's pretty secure. It takes quite a bit to get the lid off. And they make an absolutely wonderful way to carry some of these things. Uh, as I said, I've always carried some salt. And so what I've done is fill one of these with, a, with just ba basically uh, basic table salt. Uh, put a little athletic tape on there and with a Sharpie wrote uh, salt so I know what it is. And I've got some salt with me. And salt does a lot uh, in those kinds of circumstances. Uh, it also is enough, like I said, to do a little bit of a small hide to, to salt some fish. There's a number of things I can do with that. That is a, a nice little little uh, addition. Uh, like I said, my friend, he always had that onion with him that he cooked with the potatoes. And uh, what I found from that is that, that onion flavor, boy, it go, goes a long way. And so uh, you can get a, a large uh, bottle of onion flakes at the dollar store, uh, Dollar Tree for a dollar. Um, and what I do is carry one of these zip fizz tubes full of onion flakes so that if I, I want to season something, if I wanted to put that inside of a grouse when I was cooking it, or more reasonably or likely, I, I get a cup from my nestling cup that I use when I either in my backpack or in my uh, uh, Mary Poppins bag. And I uh, take that cup, I put a little bit of water in there, I cut off some of the meat or all of the meat uh, uh, from the small game I've gotten anywhere from, uh, they've opened the last couple of years, red squirrel uh, season here in Idaho, all the way to uh, sage grouse, uh, mountain grouse, um, uh, any kind of bird we might get up here. Sometimes we'll see some grazed partridge or some, some shuckers when we're out hunting. Uh, cottontail rabbits, all of those things provide me with a, a meat source and I can make myself a little bit of a stew by putting some salt, some uh, onion flakes, and that meat in that cup with a little bit of water and, and make kind of a soup or a stew. As I came up here the uh, on the way 
there were fields of sago lilies and here in Idaho it is legal to, to dig sago lilies and if if I were to have that kind of a game let's say I, I harvested a, a squirrel and wanted to make that little stew in my cup I could uh, dress that squirrel out cut it up put some onions some salt some of those sago lily bulbs maybe even some of the sago lily greens that are pretty good in that and have a pretty tasty little uh, stew um, taking it one step further, realizing that these take up almost no room. I also carry uh, some garlic, salt, pepper. Uh, some concoction, again, that I picked up at the dollar store that can, combines garlic, garlic salt with a little bit of black pepper. And, you know, if I were doing that, I wouldn't put the salt in. I'd simply use this as my salt and my garlic and my pepper. So with that, I've got a really tasty soup has that garlic flavor as well as some onion uh, and we have you know something that really changes uh, eating a uh, a bland piece of meat into a fairly savory meal especially with some sago lilies maybe some um, some of the greens from uh, anything from a nettle or any of those kinds of things we could really make us quite a substantial uh, uh, tasty meal I really like uh, Hispanic food. Food. I like Spanish food, uh, Mexican food. Let's say Mexican food because I'm going to talk about Spanish in a minute. I like Mexican food, and one of the things that they use a lot is uh, I think it's called Chef C H E F seasonings. Uh, there's a yellow one that is used for chicken. It's called pollo, which is chicken in Spanish, P O L L O. And uh, we use it whenever we cook chicken on the grill or, or fry it or any of those kinds of things, we use this, this seasoning. It gives great flavor to chicken. And so again, if I'm wanting to just roast um, a, a uh, uh, bluegrass breast, for example, uh, this has got some salt in it, it gives me that. I can also, if I was gonna make a, uh, a, uh, a little soup out of some uh, of the, the grouse, this would provide me with a little of that Hispanic flavor. It isn't particularly hot, but it's got kind of that that uh, that savory flavor that comes with that. So I carry a little bit of that around with me as well. Haven't ever used this one, uh, but uh, look forward to that at some point. The final one, I said uh, there's a difference between Hispanic or me uh, Mexican and, and Spanish food. I lived in Spain for a couple of years. I speak Spanish fluently. At some point, I'm gonna make a, a video or 10 or 100 to go with this channel that, that cater to a number of my friends out there who are uh, Spanish speaking. But in the meantime, uh, while I was in Spain, I developed a real taste for uh, smoked hot paprika. Um, I'm not sure how to describe it. It isn't like what we are t would typically think paprika. In fact, I don't know what regular paprika really tastes like, if anything, other than giving some red color to whatever you put it in. But smoked hot paprika uh, it kind of takes two things. Number one, it gives you that smoky flavor. It tastes like you've smoked the meat before you cooked it. So that's a, a, a real savory flavor. And it's hot. And when I say hot, it isn't uh, uh, make your eyes run, uh, your nose run and your eyes water uh, kind of hot. But it, it's, it's got a little kick to it. Um, and then it's the, the paprika flavor. And the closest thing I think I can describe to it is if you've eaten barbecue potato chips, uh, that's the flavor of this, but if you throw in a little bit of uh, kind of a hot pepper, cayenne pepper, something like that, that's what you get with a smoked hot paprika. Um, again, putting together these same soups, using any combination of these, and throwing this in changes the dynamic completely, changes the flavor completely, and provides us with some variety. So uh, you, this whole channel is not just about how to survive it's how to thrive and how to truly enjoy the out of doors. And, and there can be a real monotony, particularly if, if I were, uh, you know, I were living on wild meat or even needing mild, wild meat, eating wild meat for any number of days. Um, these spices in this very limited form provide me with a, a really diverse group of flavors that I can mix it up. You could do the same thing with curry. You could do the same thing with any number of flavors, but I highly recommend that in your uh, day pack, in your bug out bag, in your long term um, uh, hiking bag or camping bag, you throw in some spices. There's very little weight here. There's very little room taken up. 
and yet I've got the makings of some real different cuisines if that's what I want to do. So uh, I'm prepared to make things exciting and therefore I'm not going to feel lost when I have to eat the same thing over and over again. And as we say here at Sage of Sawtooth Bushcraft, if you're prepared, you are never really lost. Thank you for watching our channel. Thank you for your support. Please subscribe if you haven't. Hit that like button. If you subscribe, hit that bell so that you get notification when we're up. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Thank you.